Welcome back everyone to TNO The Lawsuits of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Dynapont Koku Lover, in which we're having a great time with the economy. Just don't look at that negative 4.6% growth, but the quiet of the stream. Cold, shivering, aching. Kane walked the streets at night, hauling around his fabric suitcase, bursting at the seams with all of his personal belongings he had not already dumped by the side of the road. He had just been evicted from the youth hostel he was staying in the little money he had left after being made redundant in the recent economic turmoil could no longer afford him a place to stay. He was young, only 20 years of age, and roamed the dark avenues of the capital in search for a quiet corner to sleep. The rain crackled and hammered down near the concrete sidewalk. Street-like beams twinkled in the puddles that freckled the twisting city roads Kane trudged down. Not a soul could be seen in the empty streets to pay Kane a moment of attention. As he was in a stray in his own home, afraid and alone, he sniffed and wiped his glossy eyes with soaked fingers as he stumbled down the dirtier routes for somewhere dry. He found a back alley corner packed in with metal waste disposal units and damp newspapers and hurried his belongings into the hideaway. Tears flowed from his eyes, drenching his dirty white shirt more than his soaking wet hair dripping down his face. He curled up by his belongings, doing his best to ignore the roaring rainfall and putrid smells of the waste bins, and wept for hours, defeated by his remote solitude in the shadows of the city he had just loved as a young boy. I will be forgotten, but I did ask you guys yesterday, which route should we go? Up here to the hardliners? On our own. All real politic and overall, there's overwhelming support for on our own. We shall know no master. We shall not kneel to any other power, higher or lower. We shall not revise our reforms to give concessions to appease our rivals. Our party is not to be trifled with. Our plans are not to be interrupted. Our ideas are not to be denounced. We are the ones in control. We shall not give in to these or those who oppose us. We were elected for a reason. It is our right to lead the nation and guide it to victory. We shall spear the rejuvenation of Japan and its people all on our own. Forging our own path. Fortune favors the bold, and those that glance upon the beaten paths and take the risk to carve one for themselves. The world is changing at a breakneck pace, and Kaya's best hope towards his vision of Japan is now within his cabinet, but one that shares his very own vision. Managed to tame the beast called bureaucracy in the 30s, Aoki Kazu? Kuzoi? Kuzo? Between Kishi's hardliners and a deluded compromise, an independent cabinet is the best hope for true, proper progress for our nation. On our own, of course. But after this one, we will go ahead and do what? Ah, it's good to do leading by example. Like a well-written mathematical function, our cabinet needs one last factor before it can be put into practice. One shining gem that shone dully without, or, yeah, dully, without the proper spotlight. Fukuda Takeo, a fiscal expert, protege of Takashi, and fruit of the theory's economical miracle, handpicked by our closest associate in Kazuo himself, will be the final piece of the crown of the new developmental line of the thought of Kai's government, but on her own. No living soul should inhabit an office at three in the morning, yet here Kaya was. I see him work often carried into the night nowadays, at least when it was done in the relative comfort of the Kantai here. He stood, with a few choice cabinet members sat, suited in stinking black suits, eyelids drooping. It seems old age isn't phase of minister, hmm? Somebody said. It's said Kaya doesn't age, but age does Kaya. If only they were right. The Prime Minister's old bones were aching, his hands nearly shaking, administration was proving difficult. It was six by the time the meeting concluded with a final thought from Kaya. The cabinet was at least a little more active by then, with the benefits of coffee boosting the energy. Policy cannot be allowed to be dictated by the party, any party, be it the Yoko Sankai or the opposition. The elites of the nation, too. None can be allowed to flaunt and avoid our laws. This is just the beginning of our work. It shames me to have to chip at my colleague's success, but to encourage unity within the party. Some of our newly made friends will have to suffer less cabinet positions. The reform bureaucrats will be rewarded in due time, but unfortunately, that time is not just now. The cabinet was dead silent, listening on... On in fearful anticipation. Those are my final thoughts, gentlemen. Take on board all I have said today, and we can begin to start building this nation back to greatness. The Prime Minister took what I added, hopefully, without all the all-nighters. Huh. Hopefully. Now, of course, like last time, we do the hardliners here. We do need to keep in relatively, slightly good spirits. Um, we also have the war down in there in the Philippines. I've got quite a few comments to go through, and actually we're doing really, really well in the Philippines at this point, that we basically won the war already. Um, anything else up here? Not really too much. Let's keep our command power for now. And we have emergency reforms that we're going to have to kill ourselves with. Um, I did see on the Reddit, when the time was recording, that we need to keep government stability high. And keep our house of peer support high as well. As just keep everything high as we possibly can. So that's going to be maybe a little bit of an issue. We'll see what happens. But a couple comments, such as... Someone, actually quite a few people, want me to do Tom's Bastillards uh, eventually. Yeah, eventually. I will. I, I want to do them. Um, but no one says it's going to be easy. Uh, someone says, do the Long Yun Yunnan. Of course, I'll do Long Yun eventually. Uh, someone also says, three hours is a bit too much. I know that I made the last episode two hours, so it's a little bit less, but still. Um, what else? Don't win the Philippines the first time. We should actually lose and then retake it, because apparently there's a really bad mechanic. Um, well, I don't know what the mechanic is, so I apologize. I'm, we're probably going to win here, and I'm probably going to bust my head open with whatever bad mechanic that has been put in here. But we'll see what happens, because um, it's my first time doing this, literally, so... 
we'll see what happens. But I hope it's not that bad. But from what you guys did say, it, it sounds pretty bad for the Philippines reconstruction mechanic. But as expected, our decision of a cabinet raised many eyebrows and scoffs throughout the diet, mostly from Kishi and his golden clique. However, politics is not a game one should aim to please everyone unless one indulge in the bl blandest exercise of futility. However, fortune is a fickle mistress, one that can take away as much as she gives and abandons rationality in a misplaced belief of invincibility. Our next steps will be very careful, for we must assure Kido and the diet that we will withhold the traditional pillars of our power our nation stands on. Of course, how much we will lie or will is up to debate in the future. But once the rising sun shines as brightly as it did 30 years before, not much will be up to debate after all. Standing tall in the four-drone path, the assembled Yoko Sankai was rarely a pleasant sight, and the meeting within the Diet Chambers was proving to not be one of those rare scenarios. He chose a few factions to act, not in their own self-interest, and fewer still he could trust to act for the benefit of Japan. It was clear the politicians were waiting for him, however, so Kai began a speech. I want to keep this brief, but I will have a few words I am sure some members among us would benefit from hearing. This party cannot remain divided. The disasters of the past have proven this fact to us, and each level of our government is somewhat responsible for this division. What is best for Japan, what is best for its survival, is the preservation of the Kokutai. Koku Such division only weakens these structures, and I for will not stand by and watch this happen. I will yield the floor back, but allow me these final words, only united can this government stand strong. Faint applause came about as Kai stood down, but not from the, from the leaders of said factions. Ikeda and Takagi, in particular, each gave the Prime Minister an icy stare and scoffed with disdain as Kaya met their eyes. It didn't matter, if they stood in the way of progress, Kai would crush them, like a crockroach. We gotta make sure your uh, uh, political power is really high too, so... Uh, relations? Relations can no longer be improved. Well, I mean, we, we are 88%, and we're doing pretty darn well already, so... Um, just make sure that everyone generally likes us. Good, still. Influence is 31%, not bad. Appointed ministry positions. I don't want more influence. I want to have good relations with them, though. Hardliners. Leading by example. The cabinet always assembled readily for a meeting. Another fact. <clears throat> That Kaya came to love about the men. Attentive souls, always ready to listen. But they was the, these were the men he needed to govern Japan. But even they sometimes had fears. Uh, Kishi Nobusoke is a problem, one minister declared loudly. That rat has always been known for influencing events from afar and re retaliating with brutal force if necessary. In my opinion, Prime Minister, you have to give him you give him far too much power as is. Both the liberals and conservatives are growing within the Yoko Sankai, another said. And if they think of government weak, they would most certainly band together to oppose us and bury us. Every government in this country has faced the same problems. Gentleman Kaya bellowed, silencing the cabinet when they quietened. He allowed his voice to level from yesterday to the Taisho era. This has all been an issue, the factionalism, backstabbing, booty licking. Yeah, we can manage this. We must see ground yet fight for vital issues. If we combine this pragmatism with our efficiency for administration, the Dao will bend to us. Never forget that. Never. Pragmatism overall. So we won this one. We're here short after 20 years. But, as someone did say, like I said, it might not go great for us. Standing tall. Yeah. How much we for debate after all? Rule by our viewer none. For the stamp of final approval, the new cabinet is minted to the polite approval of the Diet that supported the bureaucrats in Takagi's faction and the scorn of Kishi and his clique. Politics is an emotional beast, but much like a beast, it can be controlled, fed, or starved carefully until it's tamed, docile, most importantly, obedient. The new Japan and Kai will not be ones that will cause awe by saber rattling or endless compromises and backroom deals, but the ones that can propel her to new heights, only seen in the early century. The new path has been carved, and it's time to pave it unimpeded. Nice. Affirmation. The Ash Asahi Shimbun for you, sir, Sarah said. Sarah said, placed the newspaper right atop the desk. Who sent this Kaya from? A member from your cabinet, the security minister, I believe. The secretary bowed and left Kaya to do the paper. All right, Kaya thought. He told the minister to keep an eye out for the press's reception of the government's new agenda. The front page headline, Kaya Okanori, a guiding light to the future, informed the prime minister that this reception has been a positive one. Later throughout the paper were more encouraging headlines and articles, all showing a genuine interest and cautious hope for Kaya's newly made government. A good sight. With the public behind him, he would become unstoppable, and it was always nice to know his cabinet was supporting his leadership. Sarah, call up a security minister, or Saro. There are some things to be given. Let's not look at the economy. Uh, the comments included, uh, let's see, someone says we should go with the independence path, but there are no independence path, there's no focus there. Oh, there goes Nixon. Setting tall, of course. Um, let's see, someone says we should do the Ottoman Empire and the end of the New Beginning mod, which at the time of recording, I don't think is updated, but eventually, I don't mind doing them, yeah, sounds like fun. Ketoite faction's kind of small, huh? Standing tall and pump high. And another comment was, don't delete the Navy. I didn't say that I might delete the Navy, um, but I do, truth, be to, truth be told, I did delete a few ships. So we had, we're like down two task forces, which we're, we're, still, we're still pretty good in the Navy, right? We're still pretty good. Obviously, it's not good. I mean, it hurts our score for the Cold War, but it is what it is, you know. It is what it is.
Military 570. Yeah, we, well, maybe it wasn't smart to delete. But then again, we still get a surplus now, which we can actually use help to pay us down just a little bit. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. We always make more ships, right? Um, what else is there? Something else to do, but standing tall. The speaker voice rang the loudest the most often inside of the die chambers today. Numerous motions have passed, or had to be passed, amended or rejected. Tallies are recorded by the bookies at the front of the chamber, of oh, it's counted almost every ten minutes. The chamber was alive with activity, yet the most important motion was yet to be passed, Kaya's motion. All in favor of the Prime Minister's motion, please raise your hand. The speaker called out. Neither Takagi's clique nor the status quo politicians within the Yoko Sankai decided to raise, although Kaya hadn't expected them to. It was his own clique and the reform bureaucrats he needed. With the grunts of disdain, they, to a man, raise their hands, it would be good enough. Shouts of disapproval came from across the aisle as the speaker's voice rang out across the room. The proposal of Mr. Okinori passes. It seems the opposition hated his government almost as much as they hated each other. Nothing new, Kaya thought. This is what politics was about. Playing the enemies off each other. Power would not come from begging for scraps. It would come from making enemies. That was a fact Kaya was all, good to, was all too glad to accept. The motion passes and Pompeii. Uh, the room, office room, buzzed and churned as it did usually. Papers were shuffled to and fro, dragged on in the clasp of anxious interns. Office regulars sat lazily at their desks, pecking at their keyboards, pretending to be hard at work. The scent of coffee and cigarettes choked the ventilation, and printers whirled on in the background. The signs were at first ignored. A few accountants glanced worryingly at the stock market data screen, but neglected to investigate further. News clippings were scattered here and there, although everyone seemed to ignore the sections documenting the proposed state or proposing state of the stock market. Now, the story. Could not be further from reality. Countless corporate buildings have fallen to chaos after the Yasuda crash, with law enforcement regularly patrolling the fallout of street, sk street skirmishes between security and redundant employees. Within the offices, the shattered shards of glass cabinets skidded across the carpet of floors as employees broke into gases to prize off trophies that could get their hands on. People had stopped watching the percentages and prices they rated and sold what they could before they too were as bankrupt as their former employees were. The sudden and shocking fall of the Yasuda Corporation was predicted by few and expected by even fewer across the islands of Japan, but... All will come to taste the starving hysteria of desperate fathers, brothers, and sons trying to save their skins in the economy's plummeted zoo. Careers make monsters out of men. But begin the reforms. The Prime Minister is headstrong in his belief that economic growth must be driven primarily by the state, yet despite all of his confidence, his beliefs are not widely popular with the rest of the powers that be. There's no avoiding that a lot of convincing will need be needed in order to unite the government behind a return of the economic policies of the 30s. For now, only tentative steps can be taken in expectation of leaps and bounds to come. Nice. Approve hardline ministry appointments? Oh boy. Alright, so we got help poverty, which we tried to get better already, but still. 0.25% uh, more growth. Ooh, 0.25% is better than cutting that stuff too. 0.25. Ooh, just look at reserves. Um, it's going to hurt us all completely. Here, do the subsidized fear of growth. There you go. Where are we at, where are we at with us? 152 is not bad still. And 36%. We're going to use money and political power. House of Peers, keep it high. Use the public. Public approval just goes down, though, which we don't want. And we need more power. Honestly, we don't need that much more power right now. We could probably keep what we have here, save some of our PP. Take it because power increases, though. Ooh. Rule by our view or none. It was good to believe in yourself. The cutthroat politicians within the Yoko Sankai certainly did not. But was that true be self belief? The belief that you should accelerate your own ambition by any means necessary? Kaya thought not. Kaya held a true belief that his government had a plan that would bring Japan into another age of prosperity. A plan that Yoko Sankai would have no choice but to, to tow. That was true self-belief, the belief in your own competency. Kaya was a prime minister of Japan, all doubts must be expelled. He was entrusted by the emperor himself to lead his nation. He would not fail now. The Diet assembled slowly today. And even now the chambers echo with idle chatter. Kaya's voice quieted in their murmurs. The chamber speaker officially calling the session. All eyes turned to Kaya, burning into him. This is leadership, he told himself. This was a burden of ruling and he would not succumb to it. My colleagues, some my cabinet have I crafted a plan for prosperity. Some of you amongst us have told, aided us in doing so, whereas some of you have only hindered us. That does not matter now. As servants of Japan, I expect every one of you to be to toe the party line. To help my cabinet whatever you can, way you can, to ensure this plan can be fully implemented across the nation, the time for petty grievances is over. Even Kaya impressed himself by that line, spoke with the leader's voice. Finally, he thought, whatever you may think of my government, the time for argument and debate is over. I will not suffer any more hindrances. I will not suffer factionalism. I will not suffer cliques. From here on, I expect the Yoko Sankai's full cooperation to see my plan brought into fruition. Kaya squinted. Perhaps he too had been rough. Been too rough. He smiled, coming up with the last line to soften the blow he'd just given. Help me help you, gentlemen, in an assassination of Jose Yuyo. Oh, crap. It happened so fast that the crowds rippled with screaming before any one man could proceed process a warm crimson truth. One moment ago, Manila was a festival incarnate. 
wasting. Stalls crowded streets from end to end, bands drummed and blew trumpet tunes by the glimmering Passaic. Fireworks gave spectacles hours before their due, so infectious of the city's good mood that even the inanimate were made to move with a spirited gait. Maidens met the princess, children laughed and trod, and elders watched the followers of youth with stolid, yet warm complexions. Years preparing for war fostered restraint among Manila's denizens, with war respect or banished for good. The energies of restraint that held bay had cast it aside and engulfed the city by storm, and at its eye stood the Republic's beloved savior. Gone was a recalcitrant old relic of the late Laurel's ministry. At its place emerged an equal who had snatched victory from the twin jaws of communism and imperialism. Millions held firm to his wizened helmsmanship, and were rewarded the lasting peace their fathers sought, and so they cheered his name from the rooftops and windows along the 19 de Junio, whereupon his Mitsubishi motorcade ambled at leisure's pace, better then for the president's adoring legions that he had skewed a roof. Reach close enough, and one may even catch a glimpse of his fiery gaze. Then thunder clapped beneath the cloudless daylit sky, and instant later the fire was gone, its cauldron shattered into stains of red and gray among the asphalt. As sounds and shouting reverberated throughout the city, as truth down to the millions who denied what their eyes had seen, newscasters hours later made out the fact of truth and announced some really regret to inform you that the President Jose Yulo has passed away. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, that's not good. Ah, oh, goodbye, Gorky. Good, goodbye, Gorky. Three days later, I'll leave you incompetent fools for three days and everything's turning to crap already. High Council Takayama Shinobu steps aside and aide carrying his luggage to his office at the far end of the hallway. What if he had no longer spent an hour or more on the Manila Hotel, but at last someone at his disposal the now ex-president of the Philippines while he was away? Alongside him pays foreign minister uh, Claro M. Recto with bloodshot eyes, an untucked suit, and hair to match. Your Excellency, I can assure you everything's under control. Both men stopped in their tracks as an explosion resounded from the distance, followed by the telltale rattle of traded gunfire and loud wailing ambulances. Takayama pierced Recto with an annoyed stare before sighing and resuming his gait. He scurried behind him. Speaker Aquino's, already mustering the delegates as we speak, the assembly will convene tomorrow the latest to choose Mr. Yulo's successor. More explosions, one close enough to rattle the windows. The footsteps ahead and the floor below grew faster and more frantic. If I had my way, then there would be no assembly to speak of. Recto's blood chilled as a general glance at him as askance. Neck hairs rose with every second Takayama seemed to pin him where he stood. As if begrudgingly finding what he sought, the High Council harmed and said, But the Emperor's writ supersedes my own. You shall have your elections, for the good of it will do. For all the good it will do. The minister let loose a breath he didn't know he held. At least there's still a chance. Now, time. Now to clamp down on the madness outside. Oh crap, and this is probably really bad as you guys did say, so. Whew. Target the reformists. <clears throat> the diet, anti corruption, and fair practices to the diet. Untickle the economy. Ooh, we lose political power. Uh, cost factor's not bad. Ooh, admin gets worse. Cleanse of corruption. Oh crap. Prepare our tools. Um, change goes up. Growth will increase. More inflation. More debt. Untangle the economy, though. Administrative reform. Uh, plus one. Even though this one goes by... We lose political power, though. I don't want to lose political power yet. Political cleansing. Um, take names. I want to keep political power as fast as, as long as possible. Security breach. More, way more cost, though. Whoa. Move quick. Crush the centers. Jesus Christ, this looks not great. <laughs> Baptism by fire. Integrate the military. Court the generals. Simply this way is probably the best way to go first. Integrate the military. Unfortunately, the military remains a beast that is difficult to wrangle. On the one hand, it must learn to work with us, however. On the other, it cannot be brought completely to heal for fear of wrecking the status quo. Senior commanders will therefore need to be enticed with policies to make the government appear tough and firm against any threat. From there, a city stream of change will guide the military closer to our control. Ah, reconstruction. Alright, so the failure of the Blitz has uh, brought us even further into solidifying our position as the mass, sole master of all of Asia. Though their rebellions have collapsed, the damage that I inflicted here is sustain is costing the Filipino government a portion to clean up, which, if they're not careful, could spell economic and social disaster within the country. Thus, we have elected that we'll bring aid for our Filipino brothers in many steps and shapes and forms, be it money, medical equipment, construction, or even weapons to clean up any remaining resistance fighters. However, we've been warned that the tension in the islands is very palpable and that a failed reconstruction campaign may be warrant unforeseen consequences. We must be wary. Assistant Reconstruction. Directly sent aid to the government of the Philippines for reconstruction in many forms, be it material or money. Um, demobilize militias and consular barriers. This will the last, this allow us from performing anti guerrilla sweeps by assaults, which may hinder the progress of reconstruction in some ways. No thanks. Dismantle Manila Forts. 
Um, it's not bad. Reconstruction progress plus 25%. Reconstruction plus 30%. Emergency price fixing laws. The economic situation in the Philippines is at a critical uh, stage with a war torn country struggling to feed and provide the people with their needs as a result of decades of endless war. We must impose emergency price fixing laws to ensure that the people suffer the least and ensure that the economic situation does not degrade further and anti rebellion and succumb campaigns. With the militias on the island, we will launch numerous campaigns targeted to eliminate ro rebel holdouts or holdings within the jungles of the Philippines ourselves. This will, aid, this will aid in reconstruction immensely by eliminating threats to the regime. This allows for disbanding the militias and constabularies. They mobilize. Let's see. When removed, 60% chance reconstruction progress is good. 40% negative. The hunt against rebels in the Philippines fails. Oh, that's not good. That's pretty bad. Um, let's do price fixing stuff first. Let's see what we can do with that. Cordial with the conservatives. Conservatives. Oh, yeah, we have that as well. Um, conservatives are still a pretty large party. That's pretty large. Independents are it's terrible relations, which is not good. And keto white is poor as well. Keto has like no support. So we have conservatives, reformists, or independents. Conservatives, reformists, or independents. Conservatives, reformists, independents. So these three. Terrible, terrible. If anything, we. Probably want more independence, and then that, these guys. Conservatives are fine. So we'll see what happens. <sighs> Everything we touch has just died. So bad. So bad. Oh my gosh. We're still counting pennies, too, to help lower this inflation. That's what I'm looking for. A night she won't forget. Shh, my little button. Please try to sleep for mommy. In the darkness of the night, a young mother rocked her crying baby in her small apartment, frantically trying to get him to sleep. She rubbed his fingers, tickled his belly, and sang him lullabies, but nothing would silence the wailing child she held in her arms. She had been awake for hours now, sweating and exhausted with a piercing migraine, desperate for her child to at least quiet in his wail so she could too sleep. Her husband, who was strangely not at home at such a late hour, had recently lost his job in the mass layoff of employees working for a corporation struggling to survive the economic crisis, when crises, and could provide very little amounts of money for his family to survive off each day as a result. The baby was hungry, but there was not enough food in the house to feed him. He untucked. Her untucked breast was sore and chafed in the last ditch attempts hours ago to feed her son, but to no avail. She could not provide the breast milk for her baby, and a sense of defeat loomed over her and her body. She continued to rock her screaming baby in the darkened rooms of her dingy department, praying that her child would finally come to rest, but the cries only continued throughout the early morning. Drenched in sweat, her dirty nightgown hung over her tired shoulders as she could barely stand up for much longer. She threw herself back into a chair and rocked the baby with a drowsy passion, distressed and debilitated by her sufferings as an isolated mother in the dullness of the night. Quiet little one, mommy's here. And I'm not your mommy. God, I hope I'm not your mommy. But, keto, huh. Independence, uh, Conservatives. We'll do five percent more. President of Mexico. All right. And now we're back at a deficit. Hmm. Social spending. Actually, what does that do? Healthcare efficient. Maybe we lower that one even a little bit more. That was a little bit of lag. Ooh, that's so close. Negative growth, huh? Basically, a negative five percent real growth. Yeah, not much we can really do. We could tax temp hike. We're already losing money. Oh, there's Kennedy. Well, they're suffering problems. The Philippines are suffering problems. Everyone's suffering problems right now. Ah. Military austerity. That hurts growth maybe a little bit too, so. We're just going to deal with it. Just suck up. suck it up. Right, Kaya? Right. Committed bureaucrat. Doesn't seem like he's going to help us out that much, though. But at least reforms begin. Got any hands. My esteemed colleagues, I'm Prime Minister Kaya in Okinori. Today I stand here to announce the government's position in response to the Yasuda crisis as we revisit the past mistakes made by the Tojo and Ino cabinets and the current situation we are in. We must all ask ourselves one important question. Where did we go wrong? Indeed, there were technical mistakes in the fact we failed to handle the fiscal and financial situation. Yet that doesn't account for the full picture. Why was there resistance everywhere when we tried to call upon the people to buy bonds and make savings? Why were posters and flyers in the streets torn down and spit at by the people, and no matter how many arrests we made, the unrest kept burning red hot, red and hot? Why did the people lose faith in us? Invoking my experience as a civil servant and politician, it became clear that we had forgotten the very purpose of politics. Our constituents cast their votes on us. We feed on the taxation paid by our fellow subjects of His Majesty. His Majesty entrusted the glorious empire and his people to us, and as such, we bear the responsibility and honor to lead the people, to care for the people, and to solidify the, leader, the loyalty to His Majesty and the hearts of the people. Violent suppression of the people was in deviation from His Majesty's and the people's expectation. How good is a father if he knows nothing but beating his child? How can we solidify people's love of His Majesty? and the trust in his government if we turn a deaf ear to their voices and decline to teach them the righteous way. 
Oh, I'm looking at that too. This is bomb. Today, here in the holy halls of the Imperial Diet, I solemnly vow that the past ways of absolute control over the mass will come to an end. This cabinet will devote itself to guiding and aiding the people while serving its proud duty as a guardian of righteous values. Thank you. Among the listeners, a betrayal, a betrayed Kishi clenched his fist. Court of the generals. Yeah. Work with uh, the admirals. Begin the reforms. What's the mission? Improve hardline and ministry appointments? Court of the generals. Though the top brass of the Imperial Army is deeply divided against itself, Kai remains optimistic that a majority of officers can be brought to his side. To achieve this, a strong policy towards the security of Manchuria and Korea is to be proposed. Furthermore, continuing to preserve the stability of these key regions will be crucial to maintaining the Army's goodwill. Cost of the crash, huh? Still nothing down here, which we haven't gotten that much further down, which is fine. Oh! Oh, crap. I've not selected. Our land relations increased by 5% when selected, we get political power. Economy becomes slightly more centralized. Relations and influence goes up by as more as well. Um, we're good, 5%. Mm, and they're hardliners. Influence is low. Do we want more hardliners? When selected, we get 10 more political power, though. But they decrease by 5%. The influence is 26%, though. Relations and influence will increase. Sideline them. Influence will decrease. Well, if there's zero, that should mean nothing, right? The cost of the crash. Billy Siren's lights twinkled and the pattering rain falling down upon Tokyo's nighttime evening streets. The sky was a dark blue, overcast with gloomy clouds that casted a great shadow over the mighty city. A small crowd gathered around a crime scene inside of the Tokyo Stock Exchange building from behind blue wooden barriers, each guarded by a policeman in a drenched raincoat. The chatter murmur of a passerby that filled the streets were drowned out by the a uh, splash of rainfall and the echoing of police car sirens. Beyond the stretch of tape, police barriers, and patrolling law enforcement agents were the violently disfigured bodies of some of Tokyo's top economists. They were public names they had written in newspapers, spoken on TV, and were regulars in the fa facility. Uh, now, over the bodies that were bludgeoned and pulverized on the black and puddle ridden roads from the impact of leaping from the roof and what the police departments considered a suicide pact between the men. According to recent records over the past few weeks, their invested stocks and shares have plummeted in value since the crash, and their vested wealth have practically disappeared in mo mere moments. Mortgages' default rates have skyrocketed, banks have begun to fall, as loans cannot be repaid, entire corporations have declared bankruptcies, most alarming of all. Reported homelessness and deaths have begun to fill up official records for in most of the prefectures. The recent economic crisis afflicting Japan. Has spawned many of these events across the empire, and although many big names of Japan have remained reactive and following the effects of the turbulence, millions of the middle and working class have been plunged into the conditions of a despairing economic depression. Examined or prodded by investigators, the men's lifeless bodies were left uncovered in the rain beneath the towering stock exchange building. Some deaths are calculated, some are not. Honestly, we're going to sideline these, these guys. Less influence is a good thing for us. Appoint them to a ministry? No. Sideline them. The cordial. 238. Influence is getting low. We're going to do it. Yeah. Decreases relations by 5%. That's fine. Whatever. Oh, and now we're down here too. Reduce military spending? Yeah. Decreases power by 2.5%. 71, 2.9. Um, 70% still, of course. 72.5. That's fine enough. 52 is pretty good here too. Public approval goes up. Use a public. Power increases it by yeah, there you go. 74, 39.5, just in case. How much do we get every day? Point something? Probably point six. Probably nothing really good. Probably not. Oh, it's lagging extremely hard. It's only, oh, it's August. 1.26. Oh, that's better than I thought it would be. Independence for the Algerian Union. Will the Algerian people stay, accept yet another humiliation? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Offer concessions. Poor. Eh, that's not bad. Cordial is not bad still, though, too. Oh, and we have up here, too. 30%. Oh, Pi Philippines reconstruction deadline. Dramatically decreases. Um, well, this that's the fat twenty percent anyway, so we can do this one too. Twenty percent. This happens in th oh god, we don't have a lot of time for this. Thirty days, and that'll give us m up to twenty-five, up to fifty-five. We need forty-five left. If we get forty from something here too. Oh, no wonder you guys said this wasn't going to be very good to mobilize. Or just do this one and get 40, that 40%. 40% chance of not... Oh, God. Oh, God. That's not good. Hmm. It's either or. Well, that's ratty. No wonder you guys recommended we shouldn't just do that one. But Diocletian on his knees. He doubled over, sweat stretching, uh, streaming off his forehead. A few coins spilled from his pockets, which he picked up with a port 
sausage fingers. It wasn't enough. He looked up from the floor of the metro station, onlookers glaring in amusement and confusion. A couple passerby spat on him, others laughed out loud in front of his gloomy figure. The sweat continued to roll, forming a puddle beneath his heavy legs. He snatched a piece of cloth from the reeking tuxedo and wiped his forehead. It did little to alleviate the perspiring steam from his balding scalp. It did... Uh, his glasses dropped to the floor, under which a commuter accidentally stomped forward. Losing all hope, he pushed himself to his knees, groveling at the feet of the people passing by. Please, a few coins, I just need to get home, please. A crowd formed, whispering between themselves and the humiliating sight in front of them. A porky businessman, no doubt, fresh from the stock market floors. With a snap of the fingers, it was gone. A lifetime of investments and build-up from speculation all vanished in an instant, and with it, the gone. The man who had no choice but to display his shame to thousands for a few coins. The station was filled with rushing onlookers and commuters, but emptied of any mercy or compassion, a young man, with fire bellowing in his eyes, stepped forward and whispered, no. He then spat under the businessman's forehead with that. The crowd dispersed for the trains. The businessman slumped back against the wall, dejected, the spit joining his sweat. A people's welcome. Deep air support? We like it nice and deep. Rolling thunder? We're not really going to use this too much. Oh! Oh, wow. He just killed off spear. Alright. Well, whatever. Ooh, minus 4.6. Better than minus 4.8. Hey, so close now, finally. That's good. That's good. Educate the military. Do what we can. Do what we can. And we really need to keep an eye on this stuff. How long is this going to take? 14 days, that's not bad. That's 20 days. And this one here is 60. Oh, Jesus Christ, 60 days. Oh, my goodness. Holy crap. Brass necks. The military was an odd beast, thought Kyle. One with two heads and orders of magnitude, mere, more internal cliques and contradictions. A supremely important and necessary pillar of national strength, yet a corrupt financial drain. Uh, constantly spending more at each other's throats than the enemies. Something ne she needs to be brought to heal for its own sake and for that of the nation, but one which would almost rather destroy itself than submit to oversight. Kai supposed part of the uh, ode of the traditional views of the military officials towards civilian administration. Never mind that Kai himself had managed to bankroll the Great Crusade across the Pacific in the 30s and 40s, nor the need for budget and finance armies in general. To generals and admirals the world over, men like Kai were little more than pencil-necked bureaucrats standing in the way of the great ambition, skewed visions of necessity. But the truth of it all, one that the smarter uh, military men recognized, was that they needed each other. Kai was far from too proud to admit it. The armed forces were the only institutions capable of mustering the strength to deter the threat from outside and disciplining the threat from within. But for them to understand this, the bone would have to be thrown. Fortunately, the generals liked to consider themselves men of force and action, exactly what they would soon be required to deliver. They would need funding for this, thus, to give them what they wanted was a matter of simply directing them to where they needed. A few tense evenings and a few misunderstandings cleared, and this could be set in motion. Perhaps even Takagi could be brought on board, if only all problems were this easy. Dine with the admirals. The Admiralty is no less concerned over the possibility of Japan letting its commanding position on the world stage slip than their counterparts in the army. More promises will have to be made in order to keep them calm, too. Guarantees of stronger defenses across the critical region of Southeast Asia will be given. Emphasis will be put on the Philippines and Indonesia in particular. Because my god, is it a mess down there. It is an unholy, untidy, untidy mess. Pretty sure the military, huh? If I don't reassure them, is that going to hurt us? How bad would that hurt us? 236, huh? Begin the reforms. And we are sidelining them, so... Pursuit of the Kok to Kai. Uprising in Arajo. If you want to this, please go ahead again. Move quick. Pursuit of factions. Oh, we decrease with them. Rage and redundancy. Uh, ever read this one before? Maybe not. In the mid-afternoon, a great commotion sounded from within blocks of the Yasuda uh, office buildings and the out districts of Western Tokyo. Crashes of metal and furniture sounded from above as shattered window panes fell into the streets, exploding into a glittery array of glass daggers on the concrete pavement. Screams and wails followed, and roars of curious crowds gathered outside the Yasuda building and had surrounded the paved entrance to the offices. The police arrived at the scene a few minutes later after the swaths of civilians had gathered to investigate the commotion and set up barriers to shepherd people away from the courtyards. Suddenly, another great cry came from the crowds as more great crashes and pounds came from the block just ahead of them. Former employees, clearly uh, <clears throat> caught in the fistfights and skirmishes in the building, scurried out of the main entrance to the offices in front of the police, carrying trophies, watches, and other small valuables in their arms. They tumbled down the short steps at lightning speeds and dragged small trinkets and goods with them, presumably stolen from the cabins to sell in the market for much needed relief. The crowds gasped in horror to see them clamber across courtyards, and the mere sight of such an outrageous chaos bewildered law enforcement attempting to calm the crowds. Yeah, we're going to decrease conservative power here eventually, and, and uh, stuff like that, so I don't know, man. We, we did prop them up a little bit to work with us, but we'll see. 
Is there... It, it, does it go bad if we don't... If we get rid of the hardliners? Because that's kind of the goal, I guess, for now. Reduce military spending? People won't like that, but whatever. There we go. Reduce regulations. Public approval goes down by 5%, so be it. 39.5% is not bad. Uh, where are we at here? 70%, 72.5, good enough. And uh, public approval. One well, more public approval. There you go, not bad. Use the public. Not bad. Uh, Chris Power. There we go, we can trade that. That's fine. 163 is not bad. Yeah. And if this goes poorly, then I'm going to do some stuff off screen and make it a little funky, but whatever. Oh, crap. I keep forgetting about this. God dang it. Oh, that's so stupid. But we have enough time for this, right? 60, 60 days uh, plus 8. Yeah, that's 80. But that's 14. Oh, let's see what this does. Directly send 8 of the government of the Philippines. Yeah. Well, we'll see if we go up to 60 or 65%. Because this one, you need 20, which is not enough. That's just straight up not enough. Why do you only get 20% here? Tomsk unifies, that's nice. Which means we're forced to do anti rebel encirclement campaigns. We're literally forced to do that one. That makes no sense. Thrown away. Yaling clutched the slip, reading the text over and over again. Let go to get expenses. Let go, let go, let go. She looked to the tiny window in the falling snow, wonders if others like her share the same fate under. Uh, under her feet was a suitcase, graciously provided by her captors. Perhaps there was a tinge of light in the darkness. Ya Ling heard the creak of the door. Another woman walked into the room. Fang, clad in simple dress, sat at the other side of the room. Did you get dismissed? Ya Ling held up the slip. Fang sighed, slumping against the wall. No, they still want me, I think. Ya Ling could not figure out whether she felt bad or relief for her friend. In truth, she believed Fang was feeling the same for her. I'm I'm not sure if either of our situations are good. You, can, you can't speak Japanese and act like one. A pause, frozen and cold, descended upon the room, and I have to continue working here. Yaling had not thought of the future. Outside of the woman's quarters, she had no connections, and barely enough money to last her a month. And after she packed her meager belongings and went out in the cold, what would happen? Just could she even go back home? Only for each fate knows my future. I just hope we'll meet again. Yaling's eyes watered as her head pounded from holding back the tears, sniffing. She continued, You're a good woman, Fang. I hope you'll do well. She nodded, sensing that she should leave. Yaling kneeled in front of her bed, opening the briefcase and packed her clothes. After today, she would go to the wolves. If human life is processed, then why are so many thrown away? The dinner front. It had not taken long for disagreements to ring out over the Prime Minister's dinner table. One slightly packed general, or prick picked general, pickled general, was holding a fork into the air like a spear, glaring daggers at the men around him. Politicians street fronts like and armies like the antique cars to be adorned for a little for a time, then thrown away when a new shiny model comes by, regardless of the utility and spirit. He continued. The Kwantung army has been steadily ignored for decades now, while Tokyo gawks southward. Don't the fat cats in Sing King fool you? The partisans are very much alive still, and Russia is growing less chaotic by the day. When they come for Vladivostok, how long will it take your men to march from Shonanto? It was my understanding that the Kwantung army was supposed to hand over responsibilities from this highly competent and motivated Manchurian Imperial army I thought I kept hearing about for years now, countered another, with puffy red cheeks and a tortured, mangled pile of seafood below them. We don't have the time or money for your speculations or paranoia. You won in the north. Savor your victory. Down south, meanwhile, we still have real wars to fight and a real job to do. Why, you gentlemen, please. Glaring heads whipped around towards Kaya, smiling serenely. The failures and indiscretions of previous administrations may have caused you to forget that we have the economy of a superpower behind us, one which promises only to grow further still as we put it towards a healthier direction. Nobody will be left behind, and we are more than prepared to meet each of your needs. All I ask is for your cooperation. And the civilians will learn. The effects of our promises to the military have started to set in. Slowly, the army is reasserting itself over Korea, Manchukuo, and Guangdong as more funds begin to pour into the military aligned bureaucracies and companies. On top of that, fresh soldiers are being deployed across these regions. The people of these places will remember their place soon enough. Public approval goes down, spend more money. Uh, growth, growth, new neighbors. Yeah. 55 or 65? 6%. Alright, so we got. Hmm. Well, time to save and see what will happen. Just because I don't trust what's going to happen here, we're probably going to fail this. Just be told, we're probably going to fail this. You know what? It would be nice to use the events. Actually, we might cheat and use the events. We'll see what happens. Because if it's going to be like this, we'll see what happens. Because if we get 20%, that's literally worthless. There's no point to do 20%. We're forced to do this one. Yeah, we're forced to do it. 60% chance to get 40% chance. That is such crap. Indian National Congress splits. All right, 21%. They're still cordial. Offer concessions. No thanks. Down with the admirals. How's the economy doing? Is it so much? Oh, the 
economy is shrinking less than last month. That's better. Of course, it helps with inflation. We're reducing it by 0.34%, which is still not enough, but oh well. Uh, we now have a... Oh my gosh, we have a really bad deficit now. Uh, for, uh, by spending less, our growth is getting even worse. We do have a slight surplus, so... We're really cutting back on everything. Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. We're keeping admin expenditures high because that helps us tax more people, so that's... We gotta tax as many people as we possibly can right now. Ooh, we need some anti-air as well. That's not good. To the wolves. Fresh snow covered the sidewalk of the city as Yaling shivered. Her threadbare coat practically unusable. Snowflakes fell onto her hair and clinging onto the strands. She walked by restaurants where patrons enjoyed warm food and drink. Oh, how Yaling anguished in her fitful dreams when she was not reliving years of horror. She dreamed of a better life. Free from her memories, just to live free. Free to live the promises that she brought that brought her here. She looked into the window of a closed door and stared at her reflection. The years have sapped youth and strength. If only I didn't fall for those lies she thought forlornly. She dissolved her reflection, now wanting to relive the cruel past. Yaling trudged on, hoping, hope abandoning her soul. Walking past other pedestrians, she received strange looks. She looked away from any men and women and whispered as soon as they saw her. In her heart, she knew why. They did not know her previous profession. She wished she didn't. But her appearance was one of poverty. Her face was dirty, her hair uncombed, and eyes bagged. Not even the poorest cast off by the current crisis spared any sympathy for the woman. All Yaling could speak was silence. She couldn't communicate, for Japanese was lost on her. All she could see was indifference to her situation, memories of only discomfort. And all she could hear was her heart breaking. The wind picked up, buffeting with her with more cold. Yaling could only walk against it. They are suffering too terrible to name. Except for the economy crashing and dying, and everyone dying well, along with I with it, so. We get it. It sucks. Huh. Privatize. Public approval goes down but a little bit more. Oh, crap. 32%. That's not good at all. Why do I keep clicking on that one? Oh, more public approval, please. Yeah, I definitely can't click on this one anymore. Technically, that power is fine. House appears is really good. Public approval. Not so much. So, public approval will decrease by 5%. One more time. Okay, one more time we can deal with. Anything past that, probably not good for us. Then again, we're doing other focuses that decrease our public approval as well. That's not good either. God dang it. Civilians will learn? Yeah. This increases public approval too. God dang it. Clearing up the mess. Kai felt almost <clears throat> like a breathing aside of contentment. If only the journals could have been as easy as the admirals. He had half expected them to conduct their own little mock exercises over his table, with knives and fish heads in place of bullets and shrapnel. The IJ and it seemed were content to leave such brutish behavior to the open seas if it existed at all. Their requests are simple and could easily be granted. More funding, of course, that much was obvious. Key bases would be strongly reinforced and key shipping routes protected more vigorously. Resources would be allocated to help build the maritime forces of Japan's loyal allies in Southeast Asia. The future would be accounted for in equal measure with the present. New naval technologies, grants for the study of tactics, increased observation on the changing nature of ocean warfare around the world, all would be keenly considered. Nothing would be forgotten, no stone left unturned. A comprehensive full package for Japan's brave defenders on the waters, just then. Takagi rose to the stand, making Kai's heart skip a beat. Pleasant, pleasant or no, the admirals were deeply connected to the uh, uh, Yokosan Kai. The liberals, and so a man like Takagi's opinion counted as double here. Would this be, an, would this be enough to cooperate on at least one issue? As we all well know, Takagi began. The Prime Minister and I disagree on a wide variety of issues, and I expect we will continue to do so in the future. However, I must have, I find myself impressed with this proposed plan for the Navy. Whatever misgivings we may have, then, I would like to express my admiration for what we see before us now. He sat down and caused heart beat once more. So, we can't lower this anymore? I mean, we could. We could. Political cleansing. Ah, let's do political hunting first, so we can save our time and get more political approval first. With the cabinet assembled, the twin branches of the armed forces tamed, the rival factions within the Yokosan Kai must follow suit. By the care of the stick, there can be no opposition to the Prime Minister's rule. Our targets range from the reformists led by Takagi, the conservatives led by Ikeda, and the hardliners ruled in part by no Nobusuke Kishi. Any one of these factions can be eliminated through concessions or confrontation, however. Assaulting a faction that makes up a significant portion of our cabinet will doom the Prime Minister's tenure, of course. Not good. More growth, please. Well, could be worse, I guess. Could be a lot worse. Could be better, though. Could be a lot better. Fry inaugurated. Very cool. How's helicopters doing? They're actually doing really well on the helicopters. On the helicopters. Thank you. I'm just here to increase public support. Oh, God. It's so low. It's just so low. Use a public. I like using publics. But we got a lot of health peer support, too. Keto wise, not looking great. Conservatives are okay, even though we're going to hurt our relations with them. Alright, keep an eye on this as well up here. Uh, if it doesn't go well, I will see what 
jumbled stuff I can do off screen, but living with the unimaginable. The sea breeze brought with it the smell of salt, giving Yaling a moment of peace. Her dress fluttered as her hair dried in the wind, in and out. She reminded herself. Breathe in, she took a deep breath in, and breathe out. The docks in the early morning were her favorite place. From her vantage point, she could see the golden sun rise. Sitting on top of her suitcase, she could see a disc of orange slowly rising, perhaps. Not the wisest choice, it did seem to look at such light, but it wasn't like she could last long here. In the distance, voices, male voices. The workers were here for their shift, looking behind her. She could see that they were so deep in conversation, she could escape, picking up her suitcase. She darted behind a shipping container, hoping they didn't notice her. Yelling steeled herself in case they knew. No, no, not again. Breathe in, breathe out, she reminded herself. Panic wouldn't help her get away from the men. The men stopped in between her container and the opposite one. But Yelling could only look at the chair as she was frozen solid, a slight look. Just a slight turn in her worst fears that would attack her again. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. She shivered, her heart beating like artillery on the battlefield. The men disappeared to the front of her container. Yelling slumped down and put her face into her hands, and hot tears slowing down her face. When you're drowning, it feels easier to swim down. For the love of God, we better get it. We got 16 days, a little slightly more than two weeks. <sighs> ah. Thank God we got unlimited death ceiling. If we were to go down another credit rating, what would happen? Death ceiling plus 200%, 250%. Unlimited. Oh wait, why do we still have unlimited then? Huh. Credit rating is doing what? Plus two, minus two, plus two, plus one. Okay. So it's still going up a little bit. Could be worse. Could be a lot worse. And actually, research is coming along very nicely, actually. Just in case. We don't want any, any, too many accidents here. Two, five, three point five, nine, nine. So three point five, nine, nine. Three point five, nine, nine. 3.599 debts went down slightly more. The economy is literally just dying here. We could spend more, but it, uh, I guess what, what happens if we could do this? If we just max it out, we would still have quite a lot of growth or negative growth. It wouldn't hurt as bad, but our debt would just balloon like crazy. And I'm not going to have ballooning like crazy here. Oh, so we failed. That's great. Demobilize assist in reconstruction. Well, that sucks. So, uh, I'm going to go back and see if we can change that up. See what happens. Maybe I can make it work for us. Maybe I can't, you know. We'll see what happens. If I had to cheat a little bit by using cons commands, I'm not going to concern myself with it too much. But at least let's get through political cleansing and preserve the Kotukai. After we do this, of course, well, don't want to forget about this. Um, more house approval. Thank you very much. Civilians will learn. Drawing the lines. All of them were gathered in what would be one of the most consequential meetings Kai had, had thus far. Kishi, Aoki, Shinna, and Fukuda were all with them while they were briefed by Funada Naka as preparations for the final round of anti-corruption purges were discussed. All of our targets were chosen deliberately, Funanda Naka said as he continued his briefing to the gathered quintet. It'll send a message to the Yoko Sankai, which I expect will scare them into compliance, fortunately for us. Most of the worst offenders also the most opposed to the aims of our government. How surprising, Kai amused, all for the better for us. Indeed, Fukuda added. Everyone seemed content with it as well, that was until Shina spoke up. So long as this is only the start, Sheena said. We have scratched only the tip of the iceberg. This corruption has spread far outside the diet, and we will need to purge it from all parts of the nation if we are to restore her national character. We cannot only cut half the rot while leaving the rest to fester. The room went quiet at that declaration. Aoki nodded and signed an agreement, while Fukuda frowned. And what does that entail? The military? The schools? Where would such action stop, and would it be warranted? None of them eager, <clears throat> or seem eager, to speak after Sheena and Fukuda, and Kai became aware of the gulf that existed on where they each wanted to take this. It was Kishi who finally spoke. Such discussions are premature until the passage of the anti-corruption bill. Beyond it, I see little harm in discussing the merits of all proposals, including Shina's. Uh, Kishi's eyes tracked each of them, both wary and authoritative. We must not devolve into infighting. Remember, we are all on the same side. Oh, oh and the bell is active. So we can actually do this one first. That's fine. Because um, we have enough support for now. And what do we have here? The bill and the diet. Support 234 out of 233. Oh my gosh, we're literally one over. Support in the house needed 70 out of 58%. 50% needed. Uh, with a faction technical grasp, propose a bill. If we win, we get 5% more. If we lose, we decrease it by 5%. That's not bad. We have 35 days to do this too. So that's not bad. Um, if it's currently likely, it is currently likely to succeed. Public approval will go up. More factional power. Increased political parties. And admin efficiency begins to improve, which is very good as well. But let's at least read. Preserve the quote to Kai. It once again appears that the perverted ideals of socialism have been introduced into our nation through the use of foreign intervention and influence. These disgusting concepts must be torn out from Japan root and stem before too many of our citizens, are, of course, are corrupted. 
a federal propaganda initiative encouraging the reporting of suspected socialists and the reinforcement of national autarky she has been proposed to the cabinet, and should therefore certainly pass without too much trouble. Surely none of our senior politicians would side with such filth, but I think I'm going to spend some extra time off screen making sure that we can do well with at least the first stage of reconstruction for the second Philippine Republic, but if you enjoyed the economy, leave a like. If you don't like seeing our economy in shambles, also leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I also try to figure out how to best play as Kai's Japan. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.